Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Mind this one, titanium. Patreon.com slash real macro, patreon.com slash BKC. Okay, so <laughs> how do you like this? Huh? This is nice, right? Um, this was the tech bubble back here, and here's where we are. <laughs> Earnings per share are down, corporate profits down, unemployment up, and the stock market is going straight up like Bitcoin, gold, real estate, uh, God is not making any more land, blah, 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 blah. Each month, the last three months, the market has gone up 10%, okay? Since the lows uh, of uh, March, we are up 77%. The market cap um, of the uh, Wilshire is uh, 1.77 of US GDP. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. Let's take a look at it real quick. It's uh, 1.75. <laughs> okay, so, and, it's, and it's a lot higher now because we're making all time highs again. So, you know, we're going to double it. And, um, you know, everything is fine. And people are posting uh, this economic indicator and that indicator and that one and that one and the other one and this one. It's all crap uh, at this point. Not that it's always all crap, but at this point it's all crap because it doesn't make a difference uh, what isolator, what number beat what, uh, what uh, jobs did this. It's all bullshit. And the reason it's all bullshit is because that's not why the market is going up. Okay? Do you remember Bitcoin? You remember how it was like, well, it's the blockchain. Nick, you don't understand. You know, it's a Bitcoin. It's real money. Yeah, okay. You you uh, you run with that at uh, whatever it went up to, 15, 16,000, and then it was down to three. <laughs> Right? Tell me about blockchain when it's three. If you liked it at uh, fifteen thousand dollars a Bitcoin, you would love it at three thousand, right? So, um, w what's going on is that if you're going to um, buy back the bonds, and you're going to give cash for the equal amount of value, and we can b debate this a little bit. Because if I'm issuing, if I'm the Fed and I'm, uh, I'm issuing a, a bond uh, for $100, okay, and then you buy it, the Fed buys it back at $101, okay, it's not the same price. So just to give you an idea, right, this is aggregate bond ETF, whatever. But if the, if the Fed issues a bond at this price, let's say it's $108, okay. And then it buys it back at 111, 115, 117, 118. Okay, it's not the same price because remember the Fed has to buy the mark uh, the bonds from the open market, right? So when you're increasing deficits, you're increasing the bonds, right? That's what a deficit is. A, a deficit is an increase of the bond issuance okay the actual money that is circulating from savings buying the bonds and then back to savings does not matter that's not the deficit that's not printing okay the actual printing if you want to say printing printing is liquefying a bond meaning the fed is buying back a bond that it issued for a hundred dollars and then given the market price, let's say 100, you know, one dollars, and now it's it's given the uh, the price uh, at 111 for that bond, right? That's an increase by ten dollars. That's a profit, and at the same time, it reduces the amount of bonds that are in existence. Okay, pushing that price up. What happens to the yield? The yield comes down. And then that excess money can go anywhere at once. And it goes in the stock market. So if you're going to pump $4 trillion in deficits, 
you're going to QE another four trillion dollars. Then, what is a fund manager to do? You're going to give him the money, and, and he'll say, "What? I'm going to leave it in the bank. I'm going to, you know, two hundred fifty thousand dollars FDIC insured. Uh, I'm not going to invest it because I don't think the economy is good." No, it's not what they're going to do. They're going to go out and they're going to invest it. So it becomes a supply and demand issue. And then you end up with what you are seeing. Extraordinary popular delusions and the madness of crowds. Now, well, Nick, how can you say that? Well, it's very simple how I can say that. I can say that because it is extraordinary popular delusion. There is absolutely no way that the economy is going to grow into what the stock price of the market is right now. It's not going to happen. Forget it. When we had in January 3.4% unemployment, more jobs than people looking for jobs, everything was going great. Uh, deficits were um, increasing a trillion dollars a year okay what was GDP growth barely 2.5 percent okay not 5 percent 2.5 when everything was firing on all cylinders now let me take you back in time and here is October 9th 2019 this is when I started turning bearish on the market okay and as you can see every time that the um, these are various interest rates, okay? You got the three month, the 30 year, the six month, the 10 year, and so forth, two year, five year, whatever, uh, of, um, of bonds, okay? And every time it bunched up, you will get a recession. Bunched up, recession, bunched up, recession, bunched up, right? We were not in a recession then, in October, right? What happened? Recession. Just about now, I don't want you to think that this one data point is oh this is it this is the way it works you know I should go out and invest in this no, and and that's what I say down here at the bottom you know one of the massive mistakes I see uh, people constantly making is that they take one data point and they run around thinking that they know what the future is. That's not how it works. Okay, you have to understand first of all all of the data car sales, home sales, uh, corporate profits, retail, and so forth. Now take it all. It's a mosaic. You read it, and you see what the data tells you. And eventually, it's going to tell you a direction on a macro level. That means it's going to take some time. So this chart is one of many that I was looking at right in here. It was bunching up, and I said, well, you know, this is not a very good indication. And a lot of MMTers are going to tell you, well, you know, the, the Fed sets interest rates. Um, no. The interest rates fell faster, okay, than what the Fed was lowering. That's why you had those emergency cuts. All right. So that's very important to understand. It's the, the, the Fed does not set the interest rates. Now, it does manipulate it, of course, because it's buying various bonds okay and reducing the supply uh, uh, of um, of bonds so of course the price is going to be manipulated in that sense yes but uh, the old-fashioned way of doing things uh, the fed did not set interest rates now let's fast forward to february 20th 2020 okay and as you can see all the interest rates started to fall, and, and the red line in this uh, example is the Fed's fund rate, okay? Uh, the, the interest rate set by the Fed. All interest rates started to fall, all of them. And still, we, we the economy was fine, everybody's running around, it's just a hoax, you know, there's only one case, blah, 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 whatever, okay? And that's why I have the question mark here. And as you can see, interest rates started to fall right here okay and the Fed started lowering rates right in here 
Okay, a year later, maybe nine months. I don't know what it was exactly. Okay, so the Fed does not set interest rates. And what I what I write in the comments here it says, what is the bond market saying? And it's saying that we're in deep doo doo. Now let's then go fast forward to March fourth. Okay, and as you can see here, okay, this is the ten and the twos. I inverted it. Okay, for, so I don't want you guys to get confused. Okay. Because um, when when the tens and the twos are going inverted, they go down. T to me, it makes more sense. But anyway, okay, what happened? This is every time there was a recession, it would start to spike up, right? And this is where we were at the time in March fourth. Where did unemployment go? Off the chart, right? Straight up, recession came. And again, in the comments. When the 10 and the 2 year recession follows, the spikes, the recession follows. Remember who told you this, right? That, that's what I said back on March 4th, right? Sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Does the stock market care? Nope. And those people that are telling you it's a forward looking indicator, it has nothing to do with that. Uh, well, the numbers today were better than expected. No, the expectation was very low. Okay, and it beats. And that's what these expectations, the whisper number, all this bullshit, that's all that means. That we're going to set the, the bar so low that it, will, it would beat and then that's a reason for the market to go up. And that's not why the market is going up. It's the same thing if you go back to the China trade deal, right? Remember China, every day was a China trade deal? Every single day, China, oh, market is up. Oh, China, oh, good news. Oh, no, no. This is entertainment. It had nothing to do with China trade deal. It had to do with repos. It had to do with lower interest rates. Uh, it, it, it had to do with other nations printing money, right? And where is that money going to flow? It can go anywhere on the planet. Naturally, it's going to come to the best of breed or the best house in the worst street, right, in the U.S. So that affects it. And then you can see this chart. And this chart was uh, April something, April 19th, right up, right up here, April 19th. Okay. So we had QE2, QE3, reduction of QE, end of QE. ECB starts QE. This is what I mean, right? It doesn't have to be necessarily in the U.S. Quantitative tightening, which is quantitative normalizing. Okay. And then ECP ends QE, and what happened to the stock market? It went straight down. Then uh, it started to bounce back up. Interest rates started to fall. Repos began. Okay. And then we hit the reality of COVID-19, right? And it crashed. Now, do not confuse the fact that I went bearish in October with COVID-19. The data looked like shit uh, back in September and October. There was no reason to have repos. Repos is banks lending to each other, right? And they're not able to lend to each other. So they have to go to the Fed. And who was going to the Fed? Well, that's a secret. Okay. Then came all the stimulus. The, the Fed facility lending. The um, uh, restart of QE. Right? the increased deficits, you name it. And that's why the, this is the MMT everything. And price back then in the S&P was uh, 286, MMT everything. And we are going to the moon. Why? Because unemployment is good, because GDP growth is good, because corporate profits are good, because small businesses are thriving. Because uh, <laughs> why is the market going straight up? It's got nothing to do with being a forward-looking indicator and all this nonsense. It has to do with the amount of money that they've pumped into the system. And uh, if you if you understand how money flows, then you can clearly see that if you create a, a dollar, okay out of thin air. Sometimes it goes through the functional economy, okay, 
it circulates and then it ends up where the household has to save right in order for profit to exist you can't have one without the other you can't say i have profits and the household is saving that's not possible and the household is the 95 percent right they have to save those that income okay and then it turns into profit and after it turns into profit it's going to turn into savings remember profit is net of cost right and then that dollar that started out here created out of thin air ends up in what i call the savings bubble okay it sits there then that dollar is going to be invested it's not going to go underneath somebody somebody's mattress okay it's going to go to stocks going to go to bonds when the government wants to issue another bond to deficit well they're going to take this dollar give it to the fed the fed would give back the bond to the saver the net saver okay and then the bonds are going to increase then the fed comes in and says well you know what i'm going to give you dollars into the bond market and i'll buy those bonds from you in exchange for cash so then the the, the fed gives the the ten dollars and then it takes the bond that used to be ten dollars and now it's more and takes it back onto the fed's balance sheet so that increases the money supply because you can buy anything with cash you can't buy anything with a bond right increases the cash cash goes up bonds go down relatively speaking all things being equal but bonds go down okay and then you have a supply demand supply and demand problem the supply of bonds goes up the amount of dollars goes up and what happens price goes up right in bonds and that's why if you look closely here i don't know if you can see it right when you see the bond what do you see in the market cap of uh bonds going straight up and that's why i say when the when the fed is taking the bonds back from the market in exchange giving dollars and then those dollars can flow anywhere stocks bonds real estate commodities wherever the fuck they want right you're going to end up in a market that doesn't make any sense it's what i call a particle market it's like a uh, markets is like the quantum wave theory right uh, wave particle sometimes it acts like a wave sometimes it acts acts like a particle and this is a particle market because it's going straight up straight up okay it's not a wave this this is this is wavy right you can see the wave market this is waves okay there's some volatility in it this is not a wave market it's a particle market it's got nothing to do with fundamentals corporate profits nothing earnings per share nothing forget about that you're wasting your time if you're looking at those data points and if you think that the stock market is a sign of the economy doing well or it's forward looking or whatever okay let me take you to venezuela okay so this is the stock market of venezuela since 2012. okay you think this indicates a healthy economy okay so don't don't fall for the trickery and the fuckery um there's a reason why buffett is selling everything there's a reason why uh, bonds occur at uh, bonds <laughs> bubbles exist okay look at gold look at bitcoin peak oil remember that silver all this stuff uh eventually they pop all of them and that's exactly what this is this is a bubble let me remind you also that the economy in venezuela was kicking ass oh gdp growth was amazing all the way up to 2014 and then it all crashed okay 
I'm not saying that's that's what's going to happen here. It's not the point. Okay, I just want you to understand that when they're they're telling you, oh, you know, the market is a forward-looking indicator, and you know, blah blah blah, it's that's that's garbage. That's like saying, oh, it's the blockchain, you know, it's the blockchain. It's peak oil, you know, it it reduces, uh, it requires one barrel of oil to extract one barrel of oil. That doesn't make sense. It's not going to last. Oil is going to 250, and it was 150 at the time. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. We are in the dark, running at top speed towards a cliff. Okay. I'm not trying to be a bear shitter here. I'm not telling you the end of the world is coming. I'm not telling you that the U.S. is going to collapse and blah, 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 blah. I'm just telling you that we're headed in the wrong direction. And when you see the stock market going up every single day, every single day, 10% per month, 2% per week, okay, uh, that should clue you in that something is not right. And especially when you're seeing all these advertisements on YouTube, on uh, whatever, all the agri- algorithms are pumping all this. Oh, you know, let me teach you how to trade stocks. And, you know, guys that are taxi drivers are all excited about, um, you know, putting money in the market and they're going to go trade Forex and CFDs. I want you to remember that the more you print, the more you have to print, the more you have to print, okay, the less that the value of the currency is going to be and if you think that the m2 right this is the red line this is m2 okay uh, is what causes inflation you're wrong okay and f- this is consumer price index this is inflation and this is m2 okay cpi okay look at the money supply did it cause inflation no <laughs> we're still in a deflationary environment and that's that's the problem that all governments when they start seeing the economy falter their response is to print right to try to stimulate they call it for the people right they try to print. that doesn't work and that's how they end up in trouble there has been 146 45 nations that have defaulted in their currency okay Argentina, Albania, Albania, uh, Algeria, Angola, okay, the list is endless, and you can look at it here, okay, tell you the dates, when they defaulted, right, why did all these currencies, and don't give me this bullshit that, oh, it's because it was foreign foreign debt, yeah, why did they get into foreign debt, (laughs) because their currencies were garbage, that's why, Right. So in in this list, you can see it's both local and foreign debt. It doesn't matter. You get into foreign debt only because your currency sucks balls. Right? It's that simple. Just keep printing and printing. Right? The last one was Zimbabwe. And now, actually, you can start adding down here of uh, uh, Lebanon. Okay? And then the way it's going, Turkey as well. So that's going to be 47 and 48. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, I don't know how else to explain it to you. I know it's very fashionable to give um, uh, analysis a uh, short term of the stock market and charts. Uh, I know it's very fashionable to sit here and talk about every single data point that comes out. And let's talk about this and how this is good for the market. And uh, or bad for the market or whatever that's all fashionable it's all very good it's all marketing okay I'm I'm not into marketing I I, I hate writing <laughs> I hate uh, coming up with stories about well you know this is why the leading indicator and I have a six-point model and uh, I have this and I garbage garbage it's not gonna help you make a dime if you don't understand the, the the meat and potatoes, the macro stuff, why this is happening, then you're just wasting your time. Seriously. It's like politics. Anybody can say anything they want. The consensus consensus comes out. Everybody kind of agrees with it just because it's a political party, like a bunch of hooligans, and that's the way it is. 
China trade deal. China trade deal. That's why the market is up. China trade deal. Phase one. Yeah, well, now we're going to phase two. And what happened to that? Nothing. Didn't matter. Market still went up. Now, unfortunately, I can't tell you when this is going to pop. I cannot tell you when it's going to drop. I, I have no clue. Okay. I pick my points, my good risk rewards to the short side because that's where the fundamentals are pointing me. It doesn't go. Uh, fine. You know, when it does, it does. Okay. And then we'll talk. And then we'll talk. All right. That's it, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Don't forget patreon.com slash realmacro. Bye-bye.